of course, your Eve, your Dr. Griffith and the Provost. And my first question is, yes, we have seen a rise in retention at the college. It's now up to right around 78%, but the CUNY average is at 83%. What changes are you planning to make as an administrator in order to enhance retention at the college? The changes that we, not I, have in mind essentially have to do with three areas. What are the three areas? Uh, one area that is very critical has to do with advising. We are in the process of revamping the advising system. Right now, the advising system is split between academic affairs and student development. All freshmen go to student development, and then in their second year, their second, third, and fourth year, they go to advising. academic advisement. We're going to be changing that to enable two things to happen: to streamline the process, streamline. because I've heard complaints from even from a particular faculty member that the process is too thrown together, it should be streamlined as one process where you get financial aid, you get student development help, and you get academic advisement. Well, you can get all of those at the same place because they are separate specialties. Financial aid, for example, has a lot of state and federal regulation which the average advisor doesn't have. Doesn't have. But the idea is to streamline the advising and streamline it in a way in which students get to be advised in the department earlier. Right now, it's first year in student development, and you may or may not get to your department advising until later on. We're hoping with the revamping, students, and these are students coming in directly from high school, first time in college. For students who are transfers, you already have your back a lot, your, your maybe associate degree or you have X number of credits, you're just transferring from CUNY school or another college, we're going to move you as quickly to the department. So advising is one critical area that we're hoping can increase retention. A second critical aspect for retention is our undergraduate research program. And how does that factor into the process? It, it factor into retention in the following way. If you excite students about research, you create opportunities for them to want to stay and accomplish that research. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to come to Third Research Day last year, but I'll give you a copy of the program. This year we're having the Fourth Research Day, and... What is that day? This year, Fourth Research Day is April... I'll print your flyer. April 18th. Oh. April 18th. Right. Will that be a weekday? No, it's a, I think it's a Thursday. April 18th, it's one day. The idea is to celebrate and showcase students who've been doing research in chemistry, in biology, in mathematics, mm -hmm. in English. The evidence is from national studies that undergraduate research is a retention tool. Mm -hmm. And sometimes students come in not knowing exactly what they want to study, and they float and they float and they drop out. If you have a research mentor, if you get, if you begin excited about something, that tends to want to keep you. So we're hoping that at least those two things will help us to improve the retention. And you said there was a third thing that needed to be. The third thing has to do with the curriculum. We are going through what is now called pathways. pathways. And pathways not only will strengthen students coming in, but it will create less of a hassle for students here. It streamlines the number of credits. You have less general, edu general education credits. Right now, a student needs to complete between 42 and 51 general credits. It's now going to be all up to 42. And so it gives an opportunity for departments and majors, some of which have already begun, to reorganize minors, to reorganize their majors, make it a little more attractive. So we're hoping that pathways 
and curriculum reform in majors, in the business school for example, they've introduced several different minors and a major in operations management, a very exciting hot area. So we're hoping that with new degree programs, new curriculum programs, it will enable students to want to come and stay and finish their degree. But a brief question about that. There have been some complaints that the pathway system could, in a way, bastardize the value of a degree going to a CUNY college. What do you say about those complaints? I, so, I say those complaints are either malicious or they are not fully aware of what Pathways is all about. Pathways is three things essentially. Enabling students to come seamlessly from one CUNY school to another. You probably don't know this, but there, there are some arrangements which CUNY schools and private schools have where students are easily able to move from CUNY to private schools than to move from one CUNY school to Knotts. Why should it be more difficult to you, for you to move from LaGuardia to York or from Queensborough to Queens than it is for you to move from LaGuardia to St. John's University? So we want to make within a university it easier for students to move within Pathways does that. Pathways also reduces the number of credits. You know what's the highest number of general education credits within any one CUNY school that students have got to do? 78. Pathway says for every CUNY school it's now 42. So we've got many students within CUNY, and this is all senior colleges, who sometimes do m way above more than the 120 credits needed because when you move from one school to next, this one is not taking your credits, that one is not taking your credits. Pathways eliminates that. Pathways also says, since we're going to establish some common bases, course that you did at Queens College counts for a course similar to, let's say, Brooklyn College or York. We're not telling the professors how to teach. We're asking the faculty, what are some common learning objectives? Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're a major in chemistry, what things, and these are things the faculty decide, not administrators, what things should a person graduating with chemistry know? All right? So using that, those res, re, you know, responses, what are some learning objectives that should be in every course? Mm -hmm. Pathways does that. Uh, and so the people who are criticizing Pathways are either not fully understanding what the intent and design is, or they're just creating obstacles because of ulterior motives that they may have. All right. What changes, what changes have you made so far in order to, I know you've already talked about some, but what other changes have you made in terms of retention at the college? I just said to you what the retention changes are and plan to be. What it what they are is we're now in the fourth year of an undergraduate research program. Correct. That is a retention. What they are to be is a revamping of advising system, which should begin to take effect in spring of 2014. We also know that with Pathways, we have more opportunities to do minors, to do new degrees, because students are required now to take fewer gen ed credits. The state still says 120. And so we're saying 42 for every CUNY school. And so there's an opportunity for do, doing new degrees, new minors, create more exciting curriculum to retain students. So we how? One, we have one more question. So how will the academic village factor into those plans of retention? The academic village factors in the sense that once we have the academic village and conference center, there's an opportunity for the business school to go there to expand. There's an opportunity for student engagement to happen. You know, I often remind students that college is not just about the courses. It's about experiences that along with your classroom, the Academic Vision Conference Center creates space for student activity. 
in the academic village and conference center we will put something that we wanted to we actually got the money ready for it an observatory so that the physics and astronomy students can do the stargazing you can bring members of the community into the academic village and conference center that on the ninth floor will be the observatory so it's not only new location it's new location that creates an excitement about york and this new location creates a possibilities for students to do fun things in ways in which they can do them now because there's no student union they've got to go to the library because there is no space here there and everywhere which creates noise pollution in the library people bring their food in there and creates problem for infestation so new opportunities new sense of pride new possibilities all around. And how will the new build, how, how, what changes are you planning to make to the existing infrastructure in order? Well, this is going to have to be the last final, final question. This is the last question. One of the things that will happen once we move to the construction phase for the new building is we need to take a look at this building to see of the things that will go over there. For example, all the faculty in relation to the business school are going to go over there which means you'll have space here. Registrar's office is going to go over there. Admissions is going to go over there. So we need to have a redesign of this building space that we have not begun to talk about as yet. And what's your plan? What's your We haven't gone we haven't begun to make that plan as yet. It's not the time yet to do that. Okay, thank you very much. That's okay. all I wanted to hear. All right. All right. Okay. Well, nice to meet you, Mr. Good, good Griffith. To meet you again. I think we met, you did an interview with me before, didn't yes. you? Yes, Q&A. Good.